this is probably the most useful thing I've ever made with an Arduino. Which is kind of weird because it doesn't look like much and it's only about three dollars worth of parts. But it has saved me a huge amount of time. So this is my power blocker. It's just a simple way of stopping the back feed problem that you sometimes get with OctoPrint where your Raspberry Pi keeps your 3D printer's screen on so it just doesn't connect the 5 volts and passes through the other 3 wires of a USB cable and what this is used for is to test it so you can just plug your power blocker in here plug in your micro USB cable and on startup it will test it and the fact that that light is solid it's a bit overexposed but um, that means that this has passed the test so I have a bad one here where I've purposely bridged the pins and if I plug that in hit the reset button you can see that it's flashing so this has failed the test before I built the tester, I used to test them using a multimeter in continuity mode and these breakout pins. But the way I tested it just here, I wouldn't have actually caught the bridge. And if I wanted to test every combination of them, I reckon it would take me about 30 seconds to do, while the automated tester takes about 5 seconds. 25 seconds of a saving mightn't sound like a lot, but when you have to build a lot of them, it really does add up. Here's the estimates of making a board without the tester, and here is an estimate for making the boards with a tester. So it reduces it by 0.8 of a minute, and overall for 200 of them, it reduces it by almost 3 hours. One thing I found really interesting was that I was actually able to test the board twice, quicker than I was able to just open the anti-static bags that the boards got placed in. I first started working on the tester before I even got the power blockers on one of my streams. But like a lot of my projects it went on the long finger and I was selling them on Tindy and anytime I sold an assembled one I would just test it manually using the multimeter. But I posted a picture of the power blockers on Reddit and Tim from TH3D Studio contacted me inquiring about ordering some. So when I saw he was looking for a hundred, I realized that I definitely couldn't manually test all these. So obviously, you're probably not going to need to build a power blocker tester, but the ideas that I used for it could definitely be reused for other projects. So I'm just going to go through quickly the assembly of it, and then we'll look at the code. So the four wires from the male USB are connected into GPIO pins of the Nano. We'll go through the pinout in the code. And same for the female here are connected into GPIOs. And then also I realized that I wasn't testing that the shield was not connected to each other and that the shield wasn't bridged to any of the other pins. So I added those in later but it's now considered just another input, so like a fifth input. So if we take a look at the code, I have each of the pins to find out. So there's the pin definitions I was talking about earlier. And then in the setup, I set the female to all be input pull-ups. So this means that I don't need to have an external resistor. It's going to be pulled up with a 10K resistor. Because I only really run the test on startup, everything actually happens in the setup. It calls external methods, but it all happens in the setup. So all tests passed is equal to true happens at the beginning. And then what it will do is it'll run each one of these tests until one fails or they've all passed. So if the first test failed, this boolean would return false and now because it's uh, an and here if all tests pass was false already it won't run any of the other tests so there's no point running tests if the first test 
failed. So the results of the test get output to the serial monitor. So if you did want to see which particular test failed, then you'd be able to do it that way. I also add all the male pins and all the female pins to an array. This makes it easier to loop through them. So the initial state test is basically checking that the input pull-ups are working as expected. So similar to what I did in the Charlie plexing video, I'm making use of the tri-state logic. I don't want the male pins to have any impact on the logic level of the female pins. So I'm setting them all to be inputs and this effectively disconnects them from the circuit. I then do a digital read on all the female pins and because they're set to input pull up, I expect them all to be high. So I just check that they're all high and I return true if it is and print pass to the serial monitor. The next test is the main test. So this is that basically VCC is blocked. So what we're doing again, uh, we're setting all the male pins to be outputs and then we are writing them all to be low. So this should, anyone that they're connected should result in a low on the female side too. So VCC is expected to be high. So we'll compare all the female pins to what they're expected to be and we'll put all of them into a big and boolean statement and if they're all true it's passed and if one of them is wrong it's failed and it'll print out to the serial monitor which one failed. The last test then is bridge test and the first parameter into that is the index of the male pin that we want to test and then the second parameter is the expected output and because the male VCC is not connected to the female and it still has that input pull up, we expect that to be high. You'll also notice that there is no shield here, but we've actually already checked every combination by the time we get down to there. So testing the shield here as well would not be any benefit. So for the bridge test, it steps through all the male pins and sets all of them other than the index that's passed in to be an input and then the one that is passed in to be an output. So again, that's effectively disconnecting it from the circuit so it shouldn't interfere with our tests. We then write low on the index pin and then what we do is we step through each of the female pins and test that it has its expected output. So again, we're checking if it's the index, we expect it to be the passed in output. And if it's not the index, we would expect it to be high. And again, we just check that the Boolean was, in this case, we're checking that it is false, that there's no failing test. And if it is false, we return true. And if it's not false. So if it's true, we return false. So we could just return this, the inverse of failing test, but I wanted to also be able to write to the serial monitor too. So that's my power blocker tester. There's not a whole lot to it, but as I mentioned, it's probably the most useful thing I've ever made. Because actually since the initial order of 100, um, Tim ordered 200 more. So they're actually should be in stock now on the TH3D shop. Um, like so the main advantage of this other than time even is that I'm 100% confident that it's tested when it's finished. When if I multimetered it, I could have made a mistake but I trust that this has worked because I have created some boards that are bad to test out the failed scenarios. So once it goes through this tester, I'm fully confident that it works. And actually for the testing of the 200 power blockers, my wife did nearly all of it. So she was really happy how easy it was to use this and that she was also confident that when it was finished, 
it was fully tested, there was no worries about it. My daughter at one stage was helping press the button, but I don't think she'd be able to swap out the USBs too easily, and I'm not sure if I can trust a two-year-old for doing the QA, but eh, maybe. That's it for me. Um, hopefully you found this video interesting. If you're interested in power blockers, you can either get it from my Tindy store or you can buy it from TH3D Studios. Thanks a lot to Tim for the orders. And if you have any questions on the tester or anything like that, please let me know. And uh, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.